All right, today I have a treat. We've got uh, the SLR Ultra Kit that came out a little bit ago, but I think I'm about to finally put it on. It comes with everything you need to be baller and badass. I've unpacked the kit. This is the way that it comes. Uh, nothing, I haven't assembled or disassembled anything. Uh, this kit comes with the adjustable control arm bushings. I didn't know that came that way. And I think you install it, this on the right, this on the left. Um, <clears throat> I figured I'd answer a couple questions that people have about the SLR kit. So here's the documentation that comes with it. Uh, and first page gives you the center control arm mounting bolt, which is this guy right here. This piece is machined specifically to fit into the subframe, so all you have is this one little spacer to worry about. And um, that goes into that center piece right there. Uh, <clears throat> the other major piece that I have questions on, oh, which by the way, torque specs. Thank you, Sean. Um, <clears throat> so here's the page about how to install for Ackerman and all that jazz. Uh, and uh, different kits have different Ackerman settings, so this is only going to be for the current one. When Sean sends these out, he puts them to low Ackerman setting, but uh, low Ackerman tends to give you a uh, funny feeling car. Personally, I, I prefer uh, the medium Ackerman setting. So if you have one of the newer kits, this is how you adjust it. Uh, when you get your kit, Sean will have already put the nut on for the tie rod uh, torque to spec so you don't have to do that you can always double check but uh, just so you know <clears throat> but I've already broken this one loose and if you look at the top here you've got these little locating holes one two and so low Ackerman's on the left high Ackerman's on the right this is the uh, driver's side and so what you do is when you unbolt it, this piece will pull out and you'll notice that it has these two little locating dowels. So all you're doing is you're taking these two and you're lining them up into, sorry to do this one handed, the locating holes. So let me take that out. So if you see, you've got these two little bits and wherever these line up, this is the lower Ackerman setting and then the outer ones, the or first one's the lower Ackerman setting, the second one's higher Ackerman setting. So I'm gonna put that in that way because I want the closer to factory Ackerman setting. Otherwise, the cool thing about the newer sets is they come with the sway bar links on the control arm. Uh, there's issues with the M3 style sway bars that attach to the strut, where at high angles, it'll cause uh, one of the wheels to I think lift or I guess press down on the ground and it really makes the car feel unstable so if you know there's a lot of people that run the older SLR kits they don't run sway bars but this allows you to run a factory style sway bar but it's important to note that uh, the effectiveness of the sway bar is less than factory since you're moving uh, you haven't moved the sway bar on its access point or I guess the fulcrum or I don't know geometry, but so you might want to pick up a stiffer sway bar to run the sway bar this way. You definitely need a stiffer one than if you were to run the M3 strut. I'm rambling. Anywho, so that's the basics. Uh, and if anybody wants, screenshot this. There's that. There's the other page. And that's basically all Sean gives you, but it should be all you need. Before I put it on the car, very loosely assembled, nothing's been tightened down. Uh, I haven't lubed and put the control arm bushings on yet because I don't know if these are the right sides. Um, it's, these are E36 inner tie rods that thread into the uh, turnbuckle for the tie rods. It's worth noting that I don't think the E31s will ever properly work. It's just easier. E36 work, I think. E90 also works. 
but the E90 ones are longer. I think E36 ones are generally considered good. Uh, it's also important to note that uh, when you assemble these, make sure that, oops, sorry, make sure that the sleeves slide fine into the spherical bearing. It's what keeps it from slopping around. I've seen people accidentally install these in reverse order, the flat part on the bottom, and that makes this inner piece slop around a whole bunch. You don't want that. So just make sure the sleeves are in. Uh, when this is bolted down to the knuckle, all of that slop should be gone. All right, here's everything assembled, but hand loose before I put it on the car. Uh, E30s don't require any spacers in here. Any space will be taken up when I tighten down all the bolts. And that's what it should look like when it goes in. No slop on any of the, uh, well, shouldn't be any slop in the spherical bearings. This is okay because that hasn't been tightened down.